another method for factoring trinomials when there's a number in front of your x squared, like this example here, uh, is called grouping. Okay, so there's a grouping method as well to solving this. And personally, it's not my preferred method, um, but a lot of people really like this method because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Um, it it's really going to make it, you know, if you're not a great guess and checker, this is going to give you a more formulaic, step-by-step -step type of answer. Personally, I like a quicker answer, one that I can kind of get to, uh, you know, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, but this one will take a little bit longer, but it'll always work, and it's a little bit easier to, to figure out that way. So um, let's kind of look at how we go ahead and work through this. So if, and I would not, again, I would not use this method if there's a number, if there's no number in front of the x squared, if it's just a 1. So if there's not a number in front of the x squared, I would stick with just your basic trinomial factoring, but when there is, here's another alternate method in guess and check. What we're going to do is we're going to start by multiplying, I call this the a and the c term. So if we think about any trinomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, the a term and the c term we're going to multiply. So we're going to get here, in this case, 5 times 10 is 50. Now, what I want to do is I want to think of factors of 50 that add to give you this middle term of 27. So again, you get 50 times 1, whatever. And you could kind of, if you think through this, you could see that 25 times 2 is going to be the one that works here. Positive 25 times positive 2 will get you 50, but they'll add to give you 27. So here's what we're going to do. We have our 5x squared plus 27x plus 10. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take this middle term, and I'm going to rewrite it as the sum of 25x and 2x. So imagine this, I've got my 5x squared. I'm going to rewrite 27x as 25x, and it doesn't matter if I put the 2 here or the 5 here, really, it's not going to make a difference. So I could have put the 2 in first and the 25 second, you get the same answer. And again, notice that all I did, this stayed the same, this stayed the same. The only thing that changed was that I rewrote 27x as a sum of these two numbers, 25x plus 2x. This is the exact same thing. 25x plus 2x is 27x. And now we're going to go ahead and factor this by grouping, okay? Since we have four terms, we're going to factor the first two, and we're going to factor, it's important to keep the sign in here, and I'm going to sneak a little plus in. You'll, you'll see why when you get a, a negative um, variety of these, but, um, and I'm going to factor this now by grouping. So imagine that we have just 5x squared plus 25x plus 2x plus 10, okay? That's positive. If it was negative, I would need, need to make sure I grouped the negative sign in here. Okay, now uh, going from here, we're going to factor a GCF out. So to work grouping, I have to factor a GCF out of this parentheses and this parentheses. So the greatest common factor that I can take out of this parentheses is 5x. And when I do that, remember I have to divide each of these by 5x. So I'm left with, on the inside, x plus 5. Okay, that'll take care of the first group. Plus. Now what I want to happen when I'm factoring by grouping is I want these two parentheses to match. So I'm going to take a 2 out of this. That's the GCF here. And if I divide each of these things by 2, again, I'm going to be left with an x plus 5. And now if you notice, this is almost like a GCF. This whole x plus 5 is what these two things have in common. So if I were to pull the x plus 5 out of both of these, and divide each of these terms by x plus 5, you'd be left with, so if I pulled the x plus 5 out, I'd be left with the 5x plus 2. And that is going to be our final factored answer. And I did this example on a previous uh, video with Guess and Check. We should have gotten the exact same answer we had before. Okay, so if I pull the x plus 5 piece out of each one, I'm left with 5x plus 2. So the next one I want to look at here is number two. I don't think I did that one on the last video. I think I did number five, if I remember correctly. Um, and what I'm going to do is look at, again, one more example with grouping. And there will be a little bit of uh, trickery here, um, you know, to, to get this one to work out. So uh, if we look through this here, we've got our 24x squared minus 22x plus 3. We're going to start this the same way by multiplying the a and the c term. And that should give me, in this case, 72. There's a whole bunch of factors for 72. So if you want to take a second here to pause the video, 
See if you can find two things that multiply to give you 72, but add to give you that negative 22. Okay, so if you want to do that, you can take a second to see if you can figure that out. And if you did not choose to pause the video, you should be coming up with 18 and 22, or excuse me, 18 times 4 uh, would add to give me 22, but multiply to give me 72. And um, you may want to just leave the two negatives there too. We know that these both have to be negative, so they give us a um, positive 72, but also will add to give us a negative 22. So let's go ahead and split this guy up here. So again, all I'm going to do, I'm going to keep everything else the same. I'm going to keep the 24x squared the same. I'm going to keep that plus 3 the same. The only thing that's going to change is I'm going to split this up into the sum of these two factors. So I'm going to write this as, again, it doesn't matter which one's where. I'll just put the minus 18 on this one, minus 18x, minus 4x. It'll work either way. Uh, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and kind of factor from here. So let's go ahead and group the first two. And make sure when you group these, you need to group that negative sign in there. Okay, so again, I'll rewrite this because some people don't write this next step correctly. So I'm going to rewrite this whole thing out here just so you can see what it should look like. So we plus, and then we need that negative grouped in here. If you don't group the negative, you will get these wrong. So be careful to group that in. Um, okay, so now that we have this all set up to go, again, we're going to try and factor a GCF out so these two parentheses match. So in this one, it looks like my greatest common factor is going to probably be 6. So let's take a 6x out of here. And if I divide each of these by 6x, we should be coming up with 4x minus 3. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, we actually have a problem over here, though. There's really nothing I can take out of here that's going to simplify this. And actually, these are pretty close. They're almost the same parentheses. But right, the way this is, I can't actually factor this by grouping because the 4x here is negative and the 4x here is positive. The 3 here is negative, the 3 is positive. So I have basically the exact same thing, but the signs are flip-flopped. So if you're having trouble kind of figuring this out, well, what we could do, if you think about it, to try and get these parentheses to match is I could factor out a negative 1. So if I take a negative 1 out of here, What's going to happen is if I divide each of these things by negative 1, that will change this so they do match. I would have a 4x minus 3, and I'll just put a, there's a reason I'm going to put the minus 1 out here. You'll, you'll see why in a second. Actually, it is kind of helpful to see that. So you might hear my cat in the background. That's okay. He just likes to jump up in my face when I'm doing these videos. Um, so we've got our 4x minus 3. We're going to take that out. Again, that's what they have in common. And when we take the 4x minus 3 out, we're left with the 6x minus 1. So if I took this out of each one, I'm left with now a 6x minus 1. And then that would be our answer for that. Okay. So again, sometimes you have to be careful. If your signs don't match up perfectly, you might have to take a negative 1 out if the signs are completely flipped in both to get the parentheses to match. But again, we're looking for multiplying the outside two terms, the a and the c term, Find the factors of the A and the C term that add to give you that middle term. And then factor by grouping to try and get the trinomial. You should be able to FOIL this out and multiply it all together. And you should get the same trinomial you started with here in number two.